So should patients who want to prevent cancer follow a lower protein diet because of the fear of raising IGF-1? Or is the concern more about um, eating sugar and high glycemic carbohydrates? So a couple, there's a couple places to unpack here. So <laughs> the biggest prevention is going to be carb restriction, right? That's because 70% some research shows upwards of 90%, but let's just be conservative. So let's say 70% of all cancers are very heavily driven by insulin. All, I would say 100% are to some degree, but 70%, it's pretty much the main driver. Right. Okay. Um, that other 30%, it's a driver, but there's usually other players, such as glutamine, methionine, cysteine, right? Lu uh, uh, um, 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 arginine. Holine. Right. Some of these. Uh, so what you'll notice is those are proteins. So right. this is where the conversation gets confusing to people. Healthy metabolism of healthy cells and metabolism of cancer cells are two different animals and they're happening simultaneously. So when you look at does sugar alone cause the cancer process, it, it doesn't. It, so what you have to have a, a metabolic derangement that then switches and says, I want to utilize glucose as my primary fuel. That doesn't start that way. It's a response to something stressed in the environment that allows that shift to happen. Similar to the protein question. So let's talk about this for a moment because IGF-1 is definitely a problem, but it's a problem once the metabolism is switched over, right? And so absolutely too much protein will drive IGF-1, but it is far less common to see that than it is to see IGF-1 being caused by too many carbohydrates. Also, people always forget too much steroid, which they give every freaking patient who's on chemotherapy, which even in Dr. Um, uh, Walter Longo's newest book in the first few chapters says this should be pulled, which I've been saying for 30 years from every patient.